Hello and welcome back to another CM Travels video. It's wonderful to have you with me here today. If you're new, you know what to do. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, as well as that notification bell, so you know when we will be releasing our next video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Nikon 70-200 f2.8 S lens. Beautiful lens, by the way. And diving into where I think the sweet spot may be. What is the sweet spot? Well, it's that careful balance between sharpness and bokeh. So, without further ado, let's cue that intro. A huge, huge thank you from us here at TM Travels to all our current subscribers. You have made the journey hugely enjoyable. I always look forward to answering all of your comments. And if you have any questions today, please don't hesitate to leave a question down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can regarding any of the equipment discussed today or any other Nikon gear that you might have questions about. So let's bring up our screen now. and. Immediately, I just want to say that this is not a foolproof test. I simply set up the 70-200, had it wide open, set the ISO very low, I think it was 160, we can see here on the top left of the screen it is indeed 160. And of course with that low ISO, as I was increasing the aperture, the shutter speed went down. So I didn't notice at the time, but we will see some subtle differences which is such a key again to always getting your gear out and making sure you're on top of it. There's nothing better than using your own experience with the lenses, getting to know it, or rather finding the best way and best settings for each of your lenses. Now, this is the first set at 2.8. If we zoom in, you can see it doesn't look very good, does it? Let's go to the next one. This is at f3.2. Now here again, you can see the slow shutter speed. I think there was a bit of shake, but it doesn't look particularly sharp. This is still further away. We are all zoomed in here. These are, all these images were shot with the Z7 II and raw, unedited, as you can see, of course, and with a flat profile. I like flat profile because I think I can bring in more colors in post. That's just a personal thing. Nothing for you to particularly have a look at. But here I'm noticing it's sharper. 3.5 seems to be a lot sharper then if we go one back again to that 3.2, which is not as sharp. That looks a bit sharper. Now, here we are at F4. A big difference, don't you think? Fantastic. Now, according to BNH Photo or bnhphoto.com, thank you by the way, this is not sponsored by BNH Photo at all, but this is where I learn a lot of the tricks of the trade, as they say and you should be increasing your widest aperture lens, in this case the f2.8, you should be increasing it by two and a half to three stops. So technically you should be looking at around f5.6 to f8, to be finding that sharp sweet point. Now of course, the, the greater your aperture, it means that you lack a bit of that lovely bokeh, which we so love and I am a huge fan of. So of course, if you notice this line going down here and we go back, see it becomes a bit more fuzzy, a little bit more fuzzy as that shallower depth of field all the way to f2.8. And the edges here at f2.8 are really nice. If we just focus on the edge here, not so much on our little subject, the little owl here, we can see that change in bokeh. here. At the f4, I think that's probably a sweet point. If I'm honest, I think that that is enough bokeh for me to isolate the subject, plus give it that nice romantic look that I personally like to go for, and perhaps you like to go for as well. But let's go to f5.6. Apparently, this is where the sharpest is. Eh, not here. But don't worry, I think it's because I had a bit of shake in my camera when I was pressing the shutter button. Just for now, just keep an eye on this bokeh here as it decreases, of course, as we go up. Now that's it at 5.6. Now you can see a massive shake there. I think I took another one at f5.6. There we go, f5.6, nice and sharp. 
but look at the reduction in the bokeh. Let's go one step back here. Look at the bokeh. That's the, see that just that one stop makes a big, big difference. And then I've gone all the way up to F6.3. Now you, there's really a lack of bokeh. 7.1 and I think finally F8. Now look at the difference here in the F8. There's a lot in focus. You can see my clothes hanging in the background here and the foreground has become a lot more in focus here as well a lot in focus but if we zoom it in there there's of course a lot of detail and a lot of focus on your center point so an f8 can be good but personally i think that little sweet pot if we can go back to f4 was probably nice there it's still nice and sharp and if we go back out you still got a bit of blur in the back in the foreground rather and the background is still nicely blurred out. Now, why would we be investing in an f2.8 lens when they are cheaper and also equally as sharp and good lenses at f4? Well, we have to, of course, remember that if, if the f4 lens is only going to be sharp at f8 or more, that will be its sweet point, as I say, because two and a half to three stops over, then we're thinking, oh, f12, that's a lot. That when And when I say that, that's letting you have a lot less light and, of course, a lot less bokeh. So my ideas are beginning to change when I start thinking about these lenses. But that first set was done further back. Let's quickly dive into the first set you see here. Now I've gone in towards my subject and, of course, getting better bokeh. Now, this is at f 2.8 as you can see i've kept the information box up here up here for you so you can double check what i'm saying sometimes i do get mixed up look at this book here here beautiful and of course the subject is still very much in focus let's check out the next one very nice still very nice let's go here Look at, keep an eye on that book here. The background is coming a little bit more into focus. We're at F3.5 now. Let's go to that sweet F4 spot. Apologies, my uh, apparently my mouse likes to left click. But there you can see, this is at F4. I think that's still very, very nice. The book here is great. My subject, nice and sharp. But of course, as I keep increasing that F stop, the background gets more and more in focus, the foreground gets more and more in focus, and this line here that we have becomes sharper. Now, I just want to bring in the next set of photos because I do believe that there was a bit of shake as I got into the slower shutter speeds. You can see here the slow shutter speed, and I think it does affect the sharpness. Of course, it affects the sharpness, but I just, you see here, there's a little bit of little bit of movement which i think blurred the image and that's just because of the low shutter speed so i just want to bring up for you i did another set from f2.8 to f8 close up like you have it here but i put a two second delay on the shutter button so let's bring that up now okay now we have the close up image with a two second delay meaning we're getting our maximum sharpness. So let's have a, a good look here, f2.8. For me, I think that's still fantastic. I've zoomed, I'm not sure what, what it goes into, but it's almost a, a full one time, 100% crop, I think, as I'm zooming in here. And it looks pretty good. What of course the 2.8 does is it gives you this nice bokeh edges here on the foreground. The background is nice. It, that has completely brought your subject away from its background and you can really focus and your eyes are immediately drawn to that f2.8 but as we go up let's see how that bokeh is affected how it affects our uh, the movement of our eyes and how much it detracts or rather the, the greater we increase the f-stop how little our eyes are then drawn to that sharp place again f3.2 still very good f3.5 I think is a nice little sweet spot. Very nice. If we have a nice look here, details on the owl. 
to have a quick back again check at f2.8. The differences are extremely subtle, I think. But f4 again, for me, I still think is a really nice little sweet spot. And for those, I can see why this lens is such a popular portrait lens. Let's go back to f2.8, look at that, f2.8, then back to f4, 2.8 again, back to f4. Fantastic. Now, there are a few things, of course, to keep in mind. As I mentioned before, as I increased the f-stop, naturally, my shutter speed slowed down. I did keep the ISO low because I wanted to have the least noisy images as I could possibly have. And what that's meant, of course, is that the shutter speed has gone, has gone slower. And without that two second delay, which I put on the camera so that I can get that nice clear photo, of course, affects it. So if you increased your ISO, there shouldn't be too much change all the way up to even 1600. But there is a potential of noise entering into the photo as soon as you go above that, even with today's modern cameras. Personally, look, if I absolutely have to, I can increase the ISO, but I don't like to go over 1600. Maybe a little bit more is okay, but anything over, say, 3200, I'm not looking to, to go any more than that if I absolutely have to. Perhaps some nightscape photography, then yes, maybe, because I can go back and post and reduce some of that noise in Lightroom and maybe even in Photoshop. But for a sweet spot that I found with this 70 to 200, just so in case you don't think I'm had it with me, 70 to 200 on the beautiful Z7 II, really great combination. And don't forget that this 70 to 200 is still quite a big lens. Um, so just be aware of that. The f2.8 lenses tend to be much larger than the f4 counterparts. But I had this set up on a tripod shooting, as you can see here, if we look back again at the F4 image down the line. Now, I just want to make this permanently all the way in. Now, can you tell me, please leave a comment down below. We're at F4 here. We go down to F5, uh, 4.5. Go back again. I think there, there's an increase in sharpness. Now, according to BNH, of course, it would, should be at F5.6. There's f5, f5.6. I don't see too much of a difference between the f5.6, f5, f5, f4.5 rather, as well as f4. That for me is not a big difference. But when we go from f5.6 as I have up here and go towards f6.3, I definitely see a noticeable difference in, 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 uh, in particularly in the edges and the sharpness. I think that it's quite a sweet point there, which is really nice to know when I'm out in the field, of course, shooting. This is now you have the F8 up there. And I've always shot, particularly with my own work, at the widest possible aperture to try to bring out my subject as much as possible as I was illustrating to you before with that F2.8. Now, I have learned, and I hope the little test that we did today has showed you something unique as well, is that when I'm shooting and I want it to be at its sharpest and I don't necessarily have to separate my subject from a, a busy background, for example, I know that I should be shooting in F, between F4 and F5.6, absolutely. And that little sweet spot, I think at F6.3, for me, is great because I still think I need, I, st I, I enjoy still having a bit of that bokeh here. Another important point is, of course, the teleconverter, which many of us are using at the moment because there are, at this very moment in time, not many long telephoto S line lenses that go with the Z mount cameras. And for me, using that F, uh, the 1.4 times teleconverter with the 7200 would be a very nice sweet point hitting that f5.6 so 
I've learned a little bit today. I hope you have as well. And of course, if you found the information useful today, please do hit that subscribe, that like as well as the notification bell so you know when we will be releasing our next video. And until next time, bye-bye.